So, welcome everyone. This is Marshmallow and Mimosa. Um, I'm Adrian Tilly. I'm Wing Skull, and we're gonna cast some pods out here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Casting some pods. Yeah. So, uh, this podcast is kind of a non content podcast that we are giving a slight topic to. Mm -hmm. But, um,. Adrian and I are friends from previous work days, and um, very exciting. I'm sure everyone is glad to know that. Um, and we happen to both be really into our own entrepreneurial projects, mm -hmm. as well as a lot of super random nerdy things and cats. So why not make a podcast about exactly. that? So here we are week after the idea we're here and we're doing it exactly mm -hmm. we get it done yep yes. <laughs> <laughs> um all right so we wanted to sort of kick things off and um just talk about like what we're into these days what kind of media are you consuming these days adrian well uh i saw a movie on saturday mm -hmm. uh but this is a bad one to do it's a good first one because it's bad, right? Yeah. Uh, but I saw It Comes at Night on Saturday. It's a new horror movie. Uh, ended up being real depressing, though. Oh. It was real. <laughs> <laughs> but those were interesting. It was um, it was kind of like a post-apocalypse uh, virus kind of thing going on. Okay. Um, and it was really isolated to, like, this one family in this one house out in the woods. And then some, another family kind of comes into the picture and just... It was, yeah, and uh, so there's some really good tension. It reminded me of The Witch just a little bit. You probably haven't seen The Witch either. I haven't. Yeah. I'm, I'm not as much of a horror aficionado <laughs> yeah. as uh, you are. Yeah, I would recommend The Witch 500 times over this movie, but... Uh, Is this the one that you were saying um, reminded you of, what was that, The Last of Us? Uh, no, that was a book I read. That was, oh. uh, yeah, this was a movie I saw. That book I read was uh, The Boy on the Bridge. Oh, that's, that was good. that's right. Um... I recommend reading that book over watching this movie. <laughs> Basically, you recommend everything yes. possible over this movie. It just came to my mind because I like talking about horror stuff. And so, um, but there was like some good moments. It's just that the ending was a little bit too, uh, like, uh, disappointing. Um, yeah. But, and I think the trailer was um, big mystery. Like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's happening here and what's going on. And then you get in the movie and it was like much simpler than you expect. And so it was kind of not as, uh, yeah. But, yeah. I, you know, I'll stop talking about this thing that I wasn't even going to really recommend <laughs> and let you talk about what you're into. Oh, I started King's King Killer series. Oh, uh, yes. Though. Yeah. Yes. Book one. So I'm on like page 20 or something of that. Maybe. I am obsessed with this series mm -hmm. by Patrick Roth. Wow. By Patrick Rothfuss. <laughs> Words. Uh, yeah. It's fantastic fantasy series. Mm -hmm. If anyone wants a new one of those, it's just amazing. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. I'm sure I'll be talking about it as we go because I'm, I'm already into it. Because I started uh, this book called Fellside, which is by the same M.R. Carey wrote The Boy on the Bridge and Fellside, which I'd missed. But Fellside's also very depressing. And right after I saw that movie, I was like, do you know what? I need to change of pace. I was like, <laughs> woman accidentally killing children, going to prison and the prison politics. I'm like, um, I just need a break from this. So Yeah, no, this, <laughs> that was <Fell> Side. <laughs> this is a good way to go. The yeah. thing that I really love about the King Killer Chronicles mm -hmm. is that the magic is like science. There's, yeah. there's very much of a science to all of the different schools of magic. Yeah. And that's something I really got into, so. Yeah, I only got into like the very, very, very beginning of it. I love okay. magic systems of all kinds, so all I right. was like, I was getting into the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, well, I won't, I won't say anything else so you can experience mm -hmm. it. <laughs> In the way it's meant to be experienced, mm -hmm. but um, so we just talked about this the other day, like what we were reading and stuff. And I was I was amused at myself that I really didn't have anything to talk about. But in the last two days, I have completely switched gears. Yes. Good, as I, I do. was a little worried about you. <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, I heard a new song. <laughs> That's right, you did do that. <laughs> that was basically all I had to say. Um, so while we were talking, you recommended The Adventure Zone to me, yes. the podcast, which 
Um, if you guys haven't heard of, it's by the Macklemore brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, McElroy. What? McElroy. McElroy, not McElroy. That's totally it's different. different. <laughs> totally different thing. Um, the McElroy brothers who do My Brother, My Brother, and Me. Mm-hmm. Maximum Fun Network. So. Yeah, and it's this podcast is the brothers and their dad <laughs> playing Dungeons and Dragons. And so fantastic. I started this about two to three days ago <laughs> the first episode is two hours long every really? subsequent oh, yeah. ap- episode is at least an hour long yeah. i'm on episode eight i yeah i that's how i that's how voraciously i consume media as well yeah um i listened to it from the very beginning and it's every other week so you can probably imagine how devastating it was to have to wait <laughs> two weeks per episode uh, i can't i can't it's, I, yeah. I was up just so late last night, like embarrassingly late. Tell us. Just uh, probably three thirty in the morning. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was up just to finish this episode, and I was just laying in bed, like deliriously tired, <laughs> but also hysterically laughing. Oh, I can just be like, ah, I just work from home tomorrow. <laughs> I feel like I slept really deeply though, because uh, yeah. um, I was so exhausted. From there you staying go. up. Well, it's the and perfect way to do it then, right? Yeah, it was it was great. I highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. If you have insomnia, just listen to podcasts. Yeah. It'll cure you. Oh, I keep on talking about this YouTube channel I'm binging too. I had to wait for next episode because I can't believe okay. <laughs> I'm just like, oh yeah, that movie that I saw that I didn't really end up liking. Like this is a good <laughs> way to start. <laughs> next time I'm gonna talk about good mythical morning. Yes. So um I also I've been generally into just like RPG mm-hmm. fantasy type stuff and hence Adventures Out has yep. been such a oh my total gosh. win. Griffin is such a good storyteller. So good. Oh, yeah. So good. Um, and then to complement this spree that I'm going on with the podcast mm-hmm. I've also started reading R.A. Salvatore who I actually got so I've read a collection of short stories by him for the Legend of Drist, and um, if you're not familiar with him, he writes in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, and okay. specifically follows Drist Warden, who is a dark elf. Oh, okay. Yeah, super nice. cool. It's a good um, world to write in. It's a great world. Yeah. And um, I originally got a collection of short stories by him in this world, and it was um, an audiobook, and it was actually free mm-hmm. when I got it. You now have to actually pay for it but that's the way of things <laughs> um, but uh the cat it's this all-star nerd cast mm-hmm. that narrates it so um like david Duchovny, what? will wheaton felicia <laughs> day weird owl but the best by far uh-huh. the greatest thing my ears have ever listened to ice tea what <laughs> yeah I'm not to that even any day. joking wow. and like <laughs> <laughs> Just hearing Ice T say words like Menzo Barons on, <laughs> amazing. Also, he pr- he pronounces the W in sword, uh-huh. and swords come up a lot because it's Dungeons and Dragons. Uh-huh. Sure. So he's talking about this epic scene, and then Driss Jordan and walks out of Menzo Barons on and unsheaths his sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's adorable. He's so lovely it's He's so, so lovely yeah um yeah so that basically changed my world when i listened to that i've had the first book in the legend of drist mm-hmm. um collection for a while and i tried reading it like two or three times and i just couldn't get into the beginning mm. for whatever reason and it's been a few years that i've just had it sitting yeah. around and so i decided to give it another go i got through the beginning and now i'm just totally obsessed with it so i yeah. Since I saw you like two days ago, I've read that book and I'm wow, nice. <laughs> starting on the next one. And uh-huh. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pulled in. Um, what was it? Doctor Strange and Mr. Norrell, for whatever reason, I couldn't get past the beginning of that. And yeah. I finally like, did the audiobook and then I was like, wow, that book's amazing. But it, right? like, I couldn't read the beginning because it was really dry, at least from what I remember. It's been a few years. But it, yeah, I think I, I, again. I'm not. I love. Uh, a lot of the D&D stuff that I know. This is a complete mm. sad fact about my about 
this is a very sad fact about my life. Is Are that you choking up a little bit? I'm choking up a little bit. <laughs> I'm just getting very emotional. Um, I've never played Dungeons and Dragons. Maybe some our, one of the goals of this podcast is to find the ladies, most likely ladies, but some men maybe out there, Dungeon Master, Skype, D&D game. I you know. am for it. Mm-hmm. Humans of the internet, mm-hmm. if you would like to play Dungeons and Dragons please let me know because yeah. I my alter ego is a halfling cleric mm-hmm. it's a very established alter ego and yet she has never gone out and like mm-hmm. truly adventured yeah I was starting a D&D game and then we all kind of fell apart it just was although I heard somebody talking about that has done D&D forever and he had like had mentioned something about a lot of games kind of fall apart after like five or so like most groups mm. you just have to find like the right magical combination of people yeah so. i need this magic yeah i need this magic but and i chose a um it, i like the character it was a revenant um uh tiefling but um it was like a, she had like a crossbow and that was it basically so she's just like a, a rogue and I was like, why did I choose a rogue? Because I, I want to do magic. That's what I want to be doing. <laughs> and then I chose them. Like, all I did was, like, roll another arrow, and I'm done. And uh, I stand yeah. in the background, and I don't, you know, I'm like, just, you know, you can make a little bit of jokes. She was kind of, like, anime and, like, you know. Right. And she had, like, a little mini skirt and stuff, and it was, like, making I mean, fun of everybody all the time. It was fun, but, like, not what I wanted to be doing. I don't know. I chose <laughs> a character. Well, we need to right these wrongs, for mm-hmm. sure. Exactly. For sure. Um... So, one thing that everyone should know about this podcast is that mm. we tangent a yes. lot. And that <laughs> last, like, however many minutes is a great example. <laughs> well, you know, we started talking about, uh, well, yeah, we went to yeah. finding a D&D group. So, yeah. The main topic that we wanted to talk about today was um, the different projects that we each do in our entrepreneurial lady way um, and what sort of got us into those projects and what made us decide that those were worthy of our very valuable time. Oh, yes. Yeah, because we're (laughs) business ladies. Business. Um, Yeah, we both have, like, regular nine-to-five jobs, so we're talking about when we have evenings and uh, weekends, basically, Mm -hmm. only. Exactly. Um, Do you want to go first? Yours are more exciting. Maybe I should go first. I don't know how to do this. Uh, Yours are more exciting than mine. (laughs) So... Maybe. I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to make you feel bad by my apparently really illustrious well, side project. No, I think yours are, you can go to YouTube and watch this, or you can sign up to get this, where mine are more like, uh, you know, I'm already doing something with a group of people over there, and you'll never see what I'm doing, kind of a thing. So that's why they're not oh, okay. as exciting. Okay, yeah. Um, but I'm doing things like uh, about to teach a class on design foundations with a friend of mine, and um, what other things am I doing? Uh, and then I kind of am running a few meetups. One is for work with data visualization, and the other one is with like this ladies' wine and design group. Which, if you are a lady and you do design, you should look it up and see if it's in your city because it's great. It's like a little disc- once a month, like ten maybe twelve max ladies get together and discuss a topic on design or have, like a speaker. Like we had a really awesome one last month that was uh, a woman that does. Um, cognitive research for VR and so that was really interesting and I want to be her and she's amazing basically. VR I thought it was going to be a lot more cheesy than it was it's but so amazing. I finally tried it. Oh, I also yeah. thought it was going to make me motion sick. VR sometime. Uh, yeah no I thought it was going to make me get like vomit immediately immediately words um mm-hmm. yeah I thought that was going to well, happen. They, they changed a lot so yeah. It was. Do you have a PlayStation? No. Oh okay. I, I have PS VR, so I'll just Okay, curious. yeah. <clears throat> no, I have a Wii. Silence. <laughs> Period. <laughs> you have PC, too, you play on. No, so, yeah. I mean, as far as, like, consoles, though. Yeah. I'm not a console yeah. gamer. I'm well, my husband does. Gamer, yeah. I don't play on the PS4 very much. Yeah, but, uh, my uh, friends slash neighbors mm-hmm. have consoles, though, yeah. so, um, and they have VR, so nice. I have played Do they with have that. a PS, or they have, like, a Vive or something? Uh, it's a Vive. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they have a Vive? Where is it set up? In their office? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The Vive is amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. And, uh... Tangents. Sorry. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> There's this one... I don't know if it's, like, the default game that you get, uh-huh. but you go in, and you're in this, like, lab, uh-huh. and there's all these little console things. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's not the portal extension. No. Oh, 
okay. It looks kind of portally. Mm-hmm. Okay, go on. I don't know. Let me, it you didn't, tell me what it is. <laughs> it like, well, it is from Valve. <laughs> is it like you're in a, a a room and there's all the, like you play with some stuff and then a door opens and you come in and the repair robot? I think it's called like robot repair or something. I don't know. That's not this. But you're in this uh, like laboratory and there's all these little different stations set up. Mm-hmm. And so you can go and you can choose which one you want to go into and then that is its own mini VR game. But when you're walking around the laboratory, there's, like, coffee cups on tables, and you can just, like, pick them up and throw them. But there's also this little robot dog, which does look like, I mean, there are, to my knowledge, no robot dogs in Portal. But if there were, I think it would look like this, Uh because it was sort of like that style of, like, the turrets. Yeah. Anyway, um, so this dog is, like, running around, and if you reach down with the controller you feel when you like make contact with the dog uh-huh. and then you can like just move your hand back and forth yeah. and the dog like <laughs> rolls over and you're giving it a pet uh-huh. um but the room that my uh, neighbors have it set up in they also have a tiny white dog <laughs> perfect <laughs> and so i it's like you're petting a real dog <laughs> you know i was so into it because i'm sitting here i'm like this is amazing science and magic and i'm like moving around uh-huh. and throwing things and i reach over and i'm i'm getting so into petting this robot dog and then all of a sudden i feel an actual dog like oh jump on gosh. me from the other yeah. side <laughs> <laughs> I was terrified, but also it was amazing. Uh-huh. Um, uh, the one I was talking about, I think it's a free one, so you should see if you can get it, but it's um, Aperture Robot Repair. Okay. And it's like a really quick little, like, 10-minute experience, but it's really cool because it's in the Portal universe. I'm going to I'm gonna have them set that up yes. because it's fun. I need to do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, main topic. Why yeah. did we tangent? Uh, oh, VR. <laughs> Oh, and then my other side project is now this podcast. Yeah. And I'll be running the Instagram, and I did the cute little cat logo that uh, you're probably seeing at somewhere and right. downloading this. It's adorable. Um, and so I'm hoping to do cool stuff with that. Um, and Winx should talk about her stuff because it's amazing. Ah. Over to you, Winx. Jeez. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I have a variety of things that I do. Um, the biggest ones, and probably the ones that most of you have heard of, or are most likely to have heard of, are uh, my YouTube channel, which is called Winks and Ink. There is a tiny little corner of YouTube that is called BookTube, and this is where people who enjoy reading hang out. It's a magical corner of YouTube. Everybody is actually friendly, and I have encountered maybe two trolls That's in the whole time I've been lovely. there. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have my channel is called Winks and Ink and it's the ink is because books have ink and also I have book themed tattoos mm-hmm. so it We're gonna makes sense. We're going to do a tattoo episode at some point because we both have you have a lot more tattoos than I do but I also have a good one. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting one because we're going to have to do some serious word smithing to mm. paint you all a word picture of our Well, tattoos. I would assume we're also going to like take some pictures or something. Not that's like all true. of them, but you know, like a, you know. That's true. Yeah, let's get one or two. Yeah, yeah, no. Whatever. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I do this YouTube channel. You can um, check it out on the check internet. It it's a good time. Uh, I post, I try to post like three times a week, but pretty good sometimes i actually make that happen sometimes i will go two weeks without posting something because i get distracted and that's just how it is yeah there are a lot of clips of my cats in there and i think that is partly why a lot of people watch my videos it's not really about me or what i talk about that's the only reason i come over here i understand (laughs) (laughs) i don't blame you uh one of my other goals in life is to make my cats uh, famous on the internet. I feel like I'm getting pretty far along in that process with my cat Mosa. Uh If you go on Instagram and you look up the tag Mosa Kitty, M-O-S-A Kitty, she has her tag. It's 98% things that I have posted. Uh There's a couple others in there. And um, yeah, the internet loves her and it's pretty easy to do. It's understandable. Yes, it is understandable. Um, So besides trying to make my cats famous and um, making YouTube videos, I also run a subscription box called Book Bath Box, which you can check out at Mm bookbathbox.com. It is a um, book theme. It's basically a 
lovely curated box that comes to your door once per quarter and it is curated for those of us who understand the amazing luxury that is reading in the bath. Mm -hmm. So you get a book and you get a bath product and you get a couple like a candle and tea or mm -hmm. something like that. A couple two plus extras though a lot of times it ends up being like four because I have no self-control. Yeah, um, they're all amazing though. They, mm -hmm. I enjoy them. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and pat myself on the back and say mm -hmm. they're good boxes. Yeah. Well, I, I, you're not even, I get them. Well, I guess I was going to say I'm not biased because I get them for free. I'm like, that, how is that? I don't get them for free though because I do all the artwork for you. Yeah, exactly. So uh, if you are looking around on my uh, website or social media or whatever for Book Bath Box, I have seasonal like cover pictures and stuff that I put up and that artwork is all done by Adrian. I, the logo for the box itself, one of my yeah. other designer friends did for me. I just collect designer friends so I can get <laughs> uh -huh. some stuff. Knew it. Um, and I have the, yeah, that's my only reason for hanging out with you. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to do some small box options soon, which are, of course, themed around mm -hmm. my cats. So, I got the stickers and, yeah. and I'm very excited and, already. Yeah, so Adrian has made the designs for that and I love them. I'm probably going to have to make mugs with yes. those and I think people will yes. probably want to buy those. It's and then you're furthering the, uh, the ultimate goal of Mosa exactly. And YT being exactly. Nice. Everything is coming together yes. as planned. So yeah, I have um, those things, and then obviously the podcast, which I'm very excited about. Mm -hmm. And um, I do a little bit of writing. I have some plans of things that I'm sort of working on, but not ready quite to talk about. Um, and I have a blog that I started and then promptly mm -hmm. just left off <laughs> because I have too many other things that I'm trying to do. Um, I mean that's most. I think mean, that's what we wanted to like talk about this because I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, pick up a lot of stuff, but not all of it goes through. Exactly. And why you choose the things that have gone through? It's like when you're taking selfies or pictures of your cats. I was gonna say I don't. I've failed at taking selfies before. It's not. I am a pleasant task. I'm basically a professional selfie taker. It's one of my high. I put it that, on LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> Not really, but I should. You should. Uh, that's, we should, we were going to have our friend Avi on sometime, and that's the one to talk about. She is a, she, amazing selfie taker. Yeah. Man. That's true. So, um, the, I was going somewhere with this analogy. Yes. When you're taking <laughs> selfies or when you're taking photos of cats, you have to take about 5,000 mm -hmm. before you get the one yes. that is perfect. And I think that uh, a lot of people will see the selfie and then they're like, oh, wow, you took this one selfie and it's mm -hmm. so fabulous. Or look at this cat picture. It's because I take 500 cat pictures that I mm -hmm. will eventually get a really good one. Yeah, so. Yeah, photography's hard. Yeah, so, you know, and then we, um, we do a million different project ideas mm -hmm. and eventually you land on a really good one. Yes. And that's how it works out. Yeah, we don't just pick one project yeah. and then become millionaires yes is that the goal is that your ultimate goal <laughs> <laughs> to rule the world uh yeah i've been talking about this with my husband a lot because he started getting doing some like fan art and selling it and started working really well and i've been like yeah you gotta just like throw things at the wall just to try it like uh, there's so many things where i just need to see uh i it's easy to just think about a side project in my head and then go like, well, I can see not liking that. I'm like, how do you even know until you try it? So just kind of throw everything at the wall and see what people attach to, like people like, and also what you like. And that's how you actually get it going. Um, exactly. Yeah. And we um, are possibly going to do a full uh, episode on our feelings about Brene Brown at some point, mm -hmm. but uh, she's amazing. Uh, she, if you haven't seen it, she has a TED Talk that's on vulnerability and shame and she has several really fantastic books and which I need to read yeah it's so good the gifts of imperfection is the one that I am gearing up to right now in this little ramble but so she <laughs> talks in that book a lot about how people will be perfectionists to the point that they won't even mm -hmm. try a new thing because they probably won't be perfect at it the first time that they do oh, it. It drives me crazy when people do that. I 
am guilty of having done this. I apologize, oh, yeah. Adrian. No, I mean, I've done it in the past. <laughs> and I'm trying to I got, yeah. feel like uh, I'm getting over that habit, though. Yeah, and it's, um, I mean, that's why I wanted to do Life YouTube lessons. for, like, years. Yeah. Like, 10 years, probably, before I actually just decided to do it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't think that I was going to have anything good to talk about because all I do is read and play with cats. <laughs> But that was actually a winning combination for the internet, little did I know. Wow, you know, cats. And then, yeah, so <laughs> then I did a video about it, and, like, my cat walked in, uh-huh. and then suddenly now I have 3,000 subscribers, which nice. isn't that much, but, you know, it's a Whatever, thing. that's great. Um, oh, shoot, I had a thing I was going to say about it. Uh, oh, yeah, about us starting this podcast that, what was it, so uh, last Sunday, mm-hmm. we like got together. I was dropping something off, and I was like, because uh, I had been thinking in my head. Uh, we talked about this before, but I'm just gonna bring up the story again. But uh, uh, thinking in my head, like I really want to start a podcast. I just don't know if there's anybody in my life that uh, I have the free flowing conversation with that I could do. Or there's like a lot of people I really like, but then we end up just complaining about like <laughs> work or what you know. There's um, and then we sat down, and I was like, oh, winks. What do you think about that? Because we just sat there for like an hour and a half, like just chit chatting. Yeah, <laughs> it seriously was. You were just gonna drop off this thing, yep. and we were gonna have a cup of coffee. Yep. And I'm pretty sure the place was like closing down while we were talking. <laughs> I mean, it's only open until three or ah, something. Ah, then it was so, okay. So it was actually probably closing down. Three a.m. <laughs> uh, yeah, and like I, I had this whole plan that I needed to buy a hair purifier <laughs> um, because the allergies. place that we were... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's allergies. And I live right next to a nursery. So just pollen, mm-hmm. every variety of pollen that exists in my area just c- condensed down into one location that's several feet from my door. Yep. <laughs> awesome. And there's no air conditioner. I mean, I have, like, a portable one, but sometimes you just need the window open to have air and it's a combination of death so i was so convinced i was going to buy this air purifier i was looking them up on amazon comparing blah 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 it comes down to the moment of truth (laughs) and instead of buying this very practical and much needed air purifier i was like "Eh, i'll just buy like a 150 dollar microphone yeah because I do things with recording, mm-hmm. not necessarily audio specific, but that sounds like something I do. So yeah, I base this ridiculous purchase off of the idea that I would probably like to do a podcast at some point in my life. And then I had a couple other like random audio things I thought would be cool. And lo and behold, a few weeks later... <laughs> I had coffee with Adrian. It's a uh, synchronicity. Or exactly. Whatever. And Although, then it's funny because we're using my brand new microphone. <laughs> I just, I just bought. Say that. I was <laughs> just <laughs> gonna say that. Technical problems. Yeah, we are still fine tuning the whole oh, recording of audio things. I'm like lightly sketching on my notebook, and I'm like, I know this is getting picked up by the audio. I actually am not hearing everybody. anything so far. Yeah. Here. We'll find out. Yeah. Later. Um, although. I did actually slightly rearrange my office. We're recording Mm -hmm. in my office, which is the filming studio for Winks and Ink, also the home station, I guess, of Book Bath Box. Home station. And now it is also the recording studio for this Mm -hmm. podcast. Oh, yeah. You should put that picture on Instagram as our first one. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes. Yeah. And you got Mosa in that too, didn't you? That's true. I have... um, several photos I might have to post. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of Instagramming, which may or may not have anything to do with what we're actually talking about in this podcast, but... No, but it'll all be lovely. It's going to be good. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Um, So, that's basically all the things that I work on. One of the other things we were talking about was what actually makes us decide to do certain topics. Yes. Yes. (laughs) We're at 30 minutes. Okay. (laughs) Adrian's just peering around the <laughs> microphone to see. Uh, yeah. So, is there anything in particular that makes you decide to go for a topic? Uh, I think it's all about, I've re- been art realizing, uh, well, I mean, I have a million art projects that I work on. Um, 
and a lot of them only get like three fourths of the way through and then I um, go eh, I'll, I'll pick that up later or I didn't really like how the direction was going so um, or I finish it I do sometimes <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's really I've been realizing um, as I get older that it's about um, community like not community it's about ha just working with other people that's really what I need um, and I am starting to like a lot of the projects I'm starting to think about and goals I'm starting to work on for the future are more about how to build a community and how to be like gather people because I live working on teams and all this stuff I think we talked a little bit we've we have talked a lot in the past about being both being introverts but um I've been realizing like I don't like talking to, like new strangers and talk I like talking to people but I like talking about serious things and working on teams and working together I don't like just a random person and chit chat I hate chit chat I hate networking events I hate all that stuff <laughs> yep <laughs> As we sit here chit-chatting in a slightly <laughs> networking type fashion. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> Thanks for joining in, everybody. And we're just going to shut this down. Podcast over. <laughs> I just realized that I hate this now. <laughs> I mean, that happens. <laughs> so that terrible. actually does happen. <laughs> Chit-chat to me is meeting somebody and knowing I'm never going to talk to them again. It's the, oh my gosh, career networking events are just like nails on a chalkboard of walking up to somebody and trying to be like, let me impress you for 30 seconds. And so I don't, I don't even, I know I make bad first impressions, not like terrible, I bet I just don't make notable first impressions. And that's fine with me. I just need to not go to events and things that are geared towards making a first impression and being, and being an awesome one. I need to go to events where like I worked for I have been working for a like volunteer based stuff for this place called Hack Oregon for like over a year now and that's teams and being intimately familiar with all the people around you and that's more my style so it's just finding the right networking for you kind of feeling. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah I, I feel that I have done a good job of avoiding these exact networking situations. In fact I think the only similar event I've ever gone to was when I was a programmer because by the way I used to be a programmer what? and um yeah I know haha <laughs> 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 um yeah I was a programmer slash software engineer and I realized I hated it so now I am a marketing writer mm -hmm. um you can never be where you were if you hadn't gone through that experience though so you gotta that's do shit that is super sagely of you. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> Just drop that down. Um, <laughs> Just knock over the mic. <laughs> so loud. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I went to this one event that was called uh, OzCon Open Source Conference. Mm -hmm. And basically, though, it was more like a comic convention. Really? It, yeah, okay. like... There were a few booths where people were obviously trying to recruit and mm -hmm. asking you what you thought about this particular, I don't know, security thing. What, you know, uh. But most of it was just about getting swag. <laughs> I seriously got 12 t-shirts. Yeah, everybody comes home with like a million t-shirts. So all many t-shirts. Yeah. I'm just going up and grabbing like random t-shirts. Somebody was giving out like hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's even <laughs> happening in the world of computer science anymore. <laughs> yeah, I went to a design conference last year, but I only got, I got some, like, weird swag, and, like, I got one t-shirt, but it's because I met one of the volunteers, and he was, like, at the end of the, he was like, do you want my t-shirt? I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was the only reason I got a t-shirt. <laughs> I know. I They were throwing t-shirts, basically. You think they would, but I don't know. Whatever. They know designers aren't are gonna be a little like psh, t shirts. But right. every programmer wears t shirts, so Yeah, that's great. I that was basically all I remember from that from that conference wow. was <laughs> getting all these t shirts. Memorable. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I learned something besides the t shirt thing, but uh, that was a highlight. Um yeah, I, I, I'm totally with you on the community thing. I think that that is actually a big reason why I enjoy the things that I do because there is this really awesome and supportive uh, bookish community online between booktube and bookstagram and bookish twitter like every just every social media and then put book in the name somehow <laughs> and that's there's some sort of community aspect to it 
um, and then Goodreads. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, I just feel like everybody is super supportive of each other and um, all the other like booktubers they watch each other's videos and leave nice comments yeah. and everybody's just super happy. You there must be uh, book casts too but book. this isn't like you know. Oh, <laughs> it took me a second to even <laughs> wrap my brain around that word. Although we talk, we're going to be talking about books for only like a segment so yeah. we didn't fit into the the cool kids. That's of true. The book, book casting. Well, that was partly why I was even debating when I wanted to make my own podcast, but I had no idea what to talk about because I could just talk about books, but I do that on my YouTube channel. Yeah, and you so, want to be doing it three times a week, so you need to. Well, and then it's like, why don't you just watch my channel? Because then you're hearing the same words. Yeah, why aren't you just watching the channel? Yeah. <laughs> you just like <laughs> glared at the <laughs> microphone a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> you really like passive aggressive with the. I guess we were getting directly aggressive. Yeah, that was. There was nothing <laughs> passive about that. But even doing your listening. <laughs> <laughs> um. Wow, we were like cranking through it this time. So yes. We, we did a test. Re- yeah, we did a test recording the mm-hmm. other day. We were like delirious or something. Yeah, we were all over the map on that one. Um. And now, in the last two days, we've somehow become super, like, professional and <laughs> yes. on point. And I think I'm saying like a little bit less, but we'll find out. When every time, time will tell. I don't I'm... even realize I'm saying it as a problem. Grew up around preppies, and that's what happens. I probably, yeah. People probably think I'm preppy, too. I don't know. We'll find out. You know. I don't even know why it necessarily constitutes preppy these days. Mm. I mean, I think only teenagers, well, I don't know, I meet adult women that are still talking, like, a valley girl, valley girl kind of accent and stuff. That's true. I feel like it's almost come back around and mm. re-submerged itself into culture. Cause, I mean, there's a really fine line between, like, a Kardashian talk and a valley girl. I don't really know if I know Kardashian talk. You're breaking my heart right now, Adrian. Uh, Why? <laughs> I'm obsessed. You are? I am. I have no idea. I live for the trashiest oh. of reality TV. And everything about the Kardashians, is, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not even calling them trashy because I feel like they get that a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I'm here for them. I feel like this show is so good. There's mm-hmm. drama but it's about the most ridiculous things. Right. So, like... It puts your own life in perspective, right? It does. Uh, It makes my life feel so together. Like, I'm all stressed Mm -hmm. and stuff, and I'm trying to figure out, oh, like, how am I going to make this happen by this day? And then I just watch one episode, and I realize (laughs) that my problems, not so bad. Maybe that's why people watch, like, that hoarding show and stuff at the salon, because then you, uh... Yeah. You know, then you feel better about your own messy apartment. (laughs) Right behind Adrian, there is a mountain of boxes, probably <laughs> taller than I am, which, I mean, I'm pretty short, but it's a big pile of boxes, so I'm I'm slightly concerned you, now that she finds me to be a hoarder. You... Wh- <laughs> <laughs> I think you want to be explaining what they are. You make it sound like I should just not even say what they are. I should just like make people assume that there's just piles of boxes, like just trash. everywhere. There's yeah. just a path. That you walk through. <laughs> I have a corner full of the boxes for book bath box. Yeah, that's hoarding. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah. I mean, but there are just <laughs> um, around my six hundred and fifty square foot apartment. I have nearly three hundred boxes in various shelves and nooks and crannies, and then piled as high as as is physically possible. This is the reality of small business, okay? Exactly. It's true. Yeah. It's true. And I get a tax break because mm-hmm. I use my department for my office. It's clear you are using it. I am. So yeah. I'm using it <laughs> from floor to ceiling. In yes. Fact. <laughs> Where how did we get to this point in the conversation? I have no idea. No. Nah. Um, and then there'll just be like a real long pause here. Oh, I was here telling you about we... Kardashians. Oh right. I don't know much about Kardashians. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> and it's like Something will happen, Mm -hmm. even in their lives, that isn't that dramatic, but then the producers put this dramatic sounding music, (laughs) and suddenly you just know, like, oh, something terrible (laughs) is happening, because 
Rob didn't show up at this one party out of the oh 25 parties God. that they've had in yeah. the last week. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then sure enough. I th- I'm trying to remember. I think the last reality show I watched was uh, Project Runway. That's a good one. But it's been like five years. Oh, Me. Adrian. I know. I'm trying to remember if I've seen any other ones other than like YouTube in some ways. Because that is kind of reality. Yeah. I mean, it's actually the, the most reality <laughs> yeah. of a lot of shows. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it. it's good. And things happen on the Kardashians that obviously, like, I wouldn't necessarily recommend people do. Mm-hmm. But in a lot of cases, they actually resolve things in an almost after-school special way. Oh, really? Where, yeah, they'll have this big dramatic blowout, like one of them is... I mean, this is all scripted, right? In some ways. I don't know. Loose scripts. Who knows? It makes me happy. I'm just going to believe... I can follow these, like, bullet points today with whatever drama. That's She's still on that, right? I don't even know. I don't actually know what you're saying right Kim, now. Kim Kardashian, isn't she like the main one or something? Yeah, she's the main one. Okay, I was like, wait, is that, I'm saying the wrong name? Oh, no, yeah. The names are confusing. It okay. takes like at least the first season before you get them all down. Because oh, no. all of it's the... going to happen. All of the girls have K names. You'll just like, there'll be a Kardashian corner, and that's yeah. two Ks, and it just like catches up on what's going I on. I think that they might sue us, though, if we do that. A little review, and on a... <laughs> Wow, they're real serious. <laughs> I mean, if you do the double K, I think that you're you're verging on it. I don't know. Kim, don't come after us. <laughs> well, see, I watch all the horror movies and all the... And keep an eye on all that stuff. And you watch reality shows and, you know, so it's, you know, different perspectives. Exactly. Different interests. We bring That's why it's interesting. Different you know? awesome things to the table. You know, it's interesting. Everybody is excited to be listening. I'm sure they are. You are excited. <laughs> this is the most exciting thing you've heard all day. <laughs> it probably is. Uh, okay. Um, let's see, what else do we have to talk about today? I don't know. Did we have a segment or anything? Well, we had a few know. options of, like, small segments we could... Um, Oh, okay. So, uh, we were talking about the other day. Mm-hmm. I had the idea to talk about brains oh, with yeah, yeah. three Z's mm-hmm. because I find brains in general to be interesting. Mm-hmm. And then you, you add a few Z's, and suddenly zombies are yes. somehow involved for no apparent reason. But oh, why yeah, not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, this brought up just sort of the idea of how. What little, like, brain tricks that we do and mm. the way that we approach things. And we already sort of mentioned the thing that we do where it's, you know, we come up, we have an idea to do something and we just try it out. And that's, you know, the fail fast or whatever. And that's essentially how we actually get things done and do the entrepreneurial things that we both do. Um, I personally have a lot of ritualistic things that I do. That sounds way more hardcore when you say (laughs) ritualistic. Yes. Um, But it's it's actually a lot less exciting than that sounds. Yeah, I think it's like the introvert. It's a... We talked about that a little bit, but, like, uh, it's a very introvert thing to rituals to be, like, important. Um, Not, like, that extreme, but it just helps you get... I think you said, like, get into a mood, get your brain in the right space for what you're going to be doing. Exactly. It puts me in a headspace when I do things or listen to certain things or eat certain things. It just puts me in this space that can be good or can be a terrible thing. Um, For example, when I play video games, I... I just go and I played a lot of video games in college. I play a lot less nowadays that I have all these other things I'm trying to do, which is unfortunate, but you know, the yeah, way of the word. Yeah. Way of the world. Um, way of the word. Or the way of the word. <laughs> it is kind of the way of the word because I'm a writer. Hey. So, hey. For t shirt. I need to like <laughs> trademark that or something yes. in my caption. Um, so. When I play video games, I kind of revert back in my head to the space that I was in in college, which consequently, wow, 
I can't make words today. This is a great day to make a podcast. <laughs> um, consequently, makes me want to eat terrible, terrible um, things for my body. Yeah. So I start wanting to eat cheese whiz. <laughs> I start wanting to eat hot pockets. Just oh god, like a big all yeah. of those <laughs> classic, classic things that I would ingest in my college days, and. Yeah, it's just it's just how it goes. Even when I am watching playthroughs of games <laughs> or really? looking up things, I will sometimes just find myself wanting to have some of this like horrendous food. We and could, like break that habit by I, eating only eating healthy food or something. I don't or know it if just I makes you break want it though. I do oh, really okay. like cheese whiz. All right. Like I'm not Cheese Whiz and I have a complicated relationship. (laughs) We know we're not right for each other, but it doesn't mean we can't hang out now and then and just have a good time. Yep. Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Uh, I agree. (laughs) (laughs) More Cheese Whiz for you. Yeah. So, (laughs) moving on from that, (laughs) I do have some more positive rituals that I do. So, uh... Um, th- my idea was that I might just sprinkle these in mm-hmm. here and there along our, our different uh, episodes, but one of them that I quite enjoy is that I have a replica of Hermione's Time Turner necklace from the Harry Potter series. Um, if you are not familiar somehow in this world <laughs> with Harry Potter, it is an amazing series of books, fantasy, wizard mm-hmm. kid, saves the world. I'm not even... I'm not no, even, you don't need to. No. But one of the characters, Hermione, she has a necklace that lets her turn back time so that she can attend a class, turn back time, and attend a different class that took place at the same time in a different part of the building. Mm -hmm. Super awesome. I wish I had an actual working one, but unfortunately mine is just a replica. But uh, yeah, I have it, and it's great. And I keep it in a little fancy case, but when I have a day that is super packed with like my schedule is so tight I just have so many things to do and I need to get them done I wear the necklace Mm -hmm. and it just makes me so much more like aware of my time I'm just on my time management game yeah (laughs) and I feel like a wizard yeah and that is a great way to do my day it is yeah we were talking about how you have a lot of you have a lot of stuff that's like that yeah where I have associations with things but they're generally found that, especially like music and stuff, I'll uh, listen to music when I'm having a stressful time or something like that in my life. So I have a lot of negative associations with like certain songs. I feel like we need to work on this. We need to find something that makes you happy. I know. I'm sure they exist. But I, just like, don't, I don't have like specific items or that kind of thing. I have like some shoes that I wear that make me feel more confident. That's good. You know? That's good. And I like some like little boots. Actually, I was just going to say, are those those boots? Yeah, the one I wore in. (laughs) I think I told, yeah. They're nice boots. They just make my feet hurt if I wear them like too many days in a row, or else I'd just live in them, so. Yeah, well, you know. I I probably wouldn't feel confident all the time if I wore them straight, right? So. I mean, you could. Maybe, but it hurts my feet, so I can't do it. (laughs) Okay, here's what's going to happen. Oh, okay. I'm going to find some sort of snack. Ah, Okay. And then every time, it's basically like training a dog. <laughs> every, yeah, Pavlov's dog. Every yeah. time you come over and play with Mosa, okay. I'm going to, like, give you a piece of this snack. Yeah, that'll be tough. What'll be? I don't even know. Because I'm going to immediately go, just give me chocolate. But chocolate makes me happy in general because it literally releases endorphins. So No, it's true. Can't. But, I mean, then you get this association. And then whenever you see Mosa... Oh. We should try this as, as an know, experiment, although I already know it. You should have told me, and then you're, like, six months down the road. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you... What, you're training me to eat cheese Whiz or something? I'm like, come on! I don't want to be eating cheese Whiz. Just give it. <laughs> Just give it and try it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I, I haven't eaten cheese Whiz since I was, like, 12. <laughs> I that means I'm really judgy. I really recently. Like, when... Probably in the last year, I have consumed at least one or two cans of Cheese Whiz. I feel like we need a, uh, it's been this many days since I've eaten Cheese Whiz, a little, like, flipper. I've actually been doing very well. <laughs> I have not had Cheese Whiz. I've been trying. But you're doing no sugar right now and no Cheese Whiz? How do you? Well, Cheese Whiz, I believe, has sugar in it. 
Oh, so that's what you're... Which is... Pot- Did I you mean, go sugar uh, cold turkey? Or are you, like, easing yourself off? I actually made the worst decision oh, no. <laughs> in life. No, let me tell you oh, about okay. this. Yes. Okay. So, my mom has been telling me about this. My mom's really into food uh-huh. and stuff. Like, she's just really into health and reads all these books. She's basically a PhD in noms. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was telling me about this diet that she's been on. Um, just basically, I don't know, this like super low sugar, high fat thing, um, ketogenic. Oh my God, that, yeah. 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 And so she has been doing it and I guess like she's got a couple people in my family doing it and she was saying how she's like discovered the fountain of youth and all this. Yeah. She's super into it. Um, and it sounds like everybody in my family is having good times, feeling good. You're so thin. So, like that's also I mean, like, it's not a about to, like, like lose losing fat. weight. Okay, though. my when well, my dad did it, he did it with like a nutrition nutritionist nutrition mm. is that nutritionist nutritionist nutritionist, nutritionist. <laughs> uh, because he had type two diabetes. But oh, okay, yeah. He did that diet and started exercising. He doesn't have it anymore, and so that yeah. was part of the yeah. My aunt, um, like she's had diabetes and um, I think high blood pressure, mm-hmm. and just doing this has made this huge difference in her I feel like we just try to do like a health podcast I know (laughs) like how did this happen um and I'm generally not I mean I have a lot of food allergies so Mm -hmm. that sort of dictates what I can and cannot eat to a point but um I at the same time have spent several years where I basically just survived on chocolate cheese and potato chips and french fries i remember french fries yeah basically potato yes. products yep. and chocolate and ch- dairy i was kind of wondering how you were surviving but i didn't really want to ask i actually <laughs> had severe <laughs> vitamin deficiencies i, I found out imagine. later yeah. i was feeling really really terrible and i went to the doctor convinced that i was dying <laughs> like even uh, oh I, yeah no it was ter- well and i i have fibromyalgia and i go to a rheumatologist and she was like are you still Working and I said, Yeah, she was like, Wow, good for you. Because it was like, I was in such bad shape. Um, and then finally, they did some blood test and they're like, Let's just try giving you a test for like D and B because everyone in Portland is deficient in D because we get no sunshine. Um, so to be deficient, you have to have less than 50, I think, whatever units you know. You get the blood test back and there's just numbers. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, to be, like, healthy, you want to be at least at, like, 100. Mm. I had nine. Mm. <laughs> I was... How are you alive? I don't know. I mean, I thought I was dying, so it makes sense. There you go. I yeah. was actually probably on the verge of death. Um, my vitamin B was also, like... I don't know what the number was, but I think it was also categorized as severely deficient. Wow. Yeah. So, um... Kids at home, please eat well and take vitamins. Yeah, eat all your meals and eat right. vegetables. Right. I mean, but and also things. eat chocolate because that's just good for you. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Just not too much, right? Right. I don't Everything even know how we got moderation. there. Who knows? Uh, why are we talking about this? Um, I don't know, but we like our tangents. So we do. Even. Yeah. If you don't like tangents, then you wouldn't listen to this. I it's think true. That's really the... Originally, the podcast was going to be named after tangents, but mm-hmm. the name that we fell in love with is somewhat taken. It was like one Facebook page where a mom and her kids were using it, but I was like, I don't know. This seems kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, not much use, but too much to... To, yeah. to use it. And so. then marshmallow and mimosa just kind of came together, which I guess we could talk about. Yeah, that's true. I mean, mimosa is obvious because mimosa is your cat. but Yeah, well, I mean, it's not totally obvious because I call um, her mosa. That's true. Um, if you are not familiar with mosa kitty, you should, in fact, go check out that Instagram tag I yeah, mentioned yeah. earlier. <laughs> uh, but so her full name is actually Tallulah Mimosa, which is, let's be honest, a pretty epic it cat is, name. yes. And it's based off of a book. Where there is a uh, cat detective, and he has get it's like a noir detective, but a cat, mm-hmm. and he gets this super fancy diva client. <laughs> so, and her name is Tallulah. Oh, wow, that Rosa. really fits in with her. Now it really. Her, we I didn't, didn't even know that. I didn't even really fully understand how much of a diva she was until she started like doing her little meows and stuff at me. Yeah, she has a rid- she 
three years old, but she still meows like she's a newborn kitten. Yes. And she will insistently meow until mm-hmm. you play with her string. And then as soon as you stop playing with her and the string, she'll start right back up. At one point on this podcast, we'll capture a meow. Yeah, she's like so, super snoozing behind me. I am sitting have to in listen a, forever until that happens. Yeah, I mean, we already, or you can listen to my YouTube videos. She That's actually true. was <laughs> meowing quite a bit in the last one. <laughs> um, yeah, I am sitting in a chair right now, but I'm using about twenty five percent of mm-hmm. it, and the rest of it is taken up by her. Um, and then marshmallow is named. It's so it's a Tilly tradition to have many, many names for your animals. And one of the names I have for my cat, her actual name is Dr. Lewis. And that's my, that was, she was my husband's cat and he loves ER. And so it's actually named after a character in ER. I did not know that. Dr. Susan Lewis from ER. <laughs> I actually never knew that. <laughs> yes. Um, but we usually call her like kitty and like big girl. And she's just like, kind of, she's like, uh, so she was rescued from a daycare. They had cats for some reason. She was a little kitten then. And she was really mistreated and they weren't feeding them well. And obviously little children running around and like pulling her tail and stuff. Uh. So uh, one of my husband's Cole's friends saw the situation and immediately took all the cats out of there and gave them to all his friends. And so that's how Cole got her. But she has a lot of um, uh, symptoms of like being taken away from her mom too soon and being malnourished when she was a kitten. So she's like chubby. She's kind of like this little chubby girl and she kind of has like when when you're malnourished when you're a kid sometimes you have like the chubbier features mm-hmm. and she has like a little like kind of stubby legs and little stubby tail and she's so cute <laughs> just like I go after her and I like grab her little belly and I call her marshmallow and she's just she's so cute she's so I angry all the time seriously <laughs> so cute. Thought, I always thought that her actual name was Big Kitty yeah Big Girl whatever I did not know she was a doctor yes <laughs> for a while Cole and I were promoting her and demoting her um <laughs> based on what she was doing so she was like chief security officer lewis for a while and then like <laughs> superintendent like all like we were trying to come up with like a like hospital term like right uh, yeah like, yeah which people were really amused by but it was just hard to keep track of so that is hard to keep track of <laughs> it's not like you can like put the pips on her collar or whatever well exactly. i guess you could if she wore a collar no she wouldn't i mean tux my other cat tux cannot wear collars she might be able to he since he was a little baby, so no matter what, how you put a collar on him, he will get his bottom jaw caught into the collar and then go hide underneath the bed or something. So you look in there, his mouth is wide open and it's pinned to his chest and he's so scared. Oh, and then you have to like pull him out and he's really like freaking out, you know. Oh my God. Oh, it's happened, I think, only twice because it was like, I tried it when he was a kitten, didn't work out. And then I tried it as an adult and I'm like, this isn't going to work. It doesn't matter how tight that collar is. He will find his way to <laughs> ch- his jaw into it. Yeah, I... I YT will wear a collar, but Mosa, uh, not so much. Oh, no. It has to be... I mean, maybe you got, like, a diamond-studded one or something. Maybe, but I think she'll... She likes to be natural and free. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> but she also has zero interest ever in outside. Yeah. Like, she's terrified of outside. Yeah, talks so. too. I don't have to worry as much about her. Also, we are just coming up to an hour here. All right. So well, maybe we should, should wrap it up then. Yeah. Okay. So um, our theme music is by Peter Carmen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we're going to be on all of the social media, uh, Instagram, Marshmallow Mimosa. I think we're all those iterations. There's some one of them that isn't yeah. that. So, uh, we currently have a YouTube channel where you might actually be listening to this and watching a still image of our amazing logo, <laughs> uh, and that is Marshmallow and Mimosa, and we have a Twitter account where we could not fit the full name Marshmallow and Mimosa, so that is Marshmallow Mosa. We also have the Instagram account, Marshmallow mm-hmm. and Mimosa. Um, you can also reach us at uh, marshmallow and mimosa <laughs> at gmail.com. We'll tighten that up at some point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, leave us some comments, though. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, yes, please. leave us some info in the comments or uh-huh. give us a rating on iTunes. Yeah, uh, we're just starting out. So yeah. uh, any feedback is good feedback we want to hear from you guys. Yeah, let us know mm-hmm. what you like and what you don't like. But 
be gentle with the latter. Yes. We are sensitive souls. Uh, and this is, no one's going to, uh, real, I'm going to start doing Catterday posts on Instagram. So, and eventually when we have some people listening to this, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to re, I want to regram people's stuff. So send like tag us on cat photos and cat drawings and stuff like that. Yes. Yes. Definitely do this. Um, Okay, so I think that's all we wanted to cover for for all of this. So yes. <laughs> give us some give us some ratings and some feedback. Follow us in all the places. I think I'm just gonna like pay off and go. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs> we don't know how to end it. I know. Okay.